Create a new document in Blender. Get rid of the cube and light. We're not going to use them. Open up a VFX workspace and go to motion tracking. Click on open to load your video footage. This is just footage I shot on an iPhone. Any footage will do. Click on prefetch to load your footage into your computer's RAM. This will help you track through the footage a bit faster. Click on detect features to find a bunch of tracking points, then track forward. Once you've tracked through about 50 frames, select detect features again, press A to select all tracking points, and continue tracking forward. Keep doing this in about 50 frame chunks until you've tracked through all of your footage. Once you have tracked through all of your footage, press A to select all of your tracking markers. Go to the Solve tab, and under Refine, select Focal Length, K1, and K2, and then press Solve Camera Motion. This will take a few seconds, but what Blender is doing is calculating the pixel error between the tracking markers and your footage. Here we can see an error of 3.8 pixels. That's a little bit high. If we go to Clip Display and press Info, we can see the average error for each tracking point. You can go through and delete every marker that has a tracking error of greater than one pixel. Once you've done this, you can select all of your tracking markers and solve for camera motion again. Now we've got a solve error of 3.76 pixels. Better, but not great. You can click on Clean Tracks and set the error to 5. This will select every tracking marker that has a solve error greater than 5 pixels. Delete those and solve again. 0.97. That's a little bit better, but I bet we can get it lower. Repeat the process by lowering the error threshold to about 3 pixels and delete them and solve again. Point eight eight, pretty good. Let's do this one more time, but lower the threshold to one pixel, delete those tracks, and solve for one last time. Point six six, that's pretty good. Let's use that moving forward. Click on Set as Background to load this tracking scene into your 3D viewport. Click on Set up Tracking Scene, and that will place all the markers and the camera motion into the 3D viewport. But Blender doesn't quite know what the ground is, so we have to figure this out. Scrub to a point in your footage where you can find three solid tracked points to use as the ground. Select these three points and click on Floor. Go back to the layout workspace and press play and we can see the camera moving through. This movement is the tracked movement that we got from our motion tracking setup. We can look through the camera by pressing zero and see what that footage looks like. Here I'm just modeling a few cubes to serve as placeholders in our motion tracked scene. To get more realistic lighting in your scene, go to World Setup, Color, Environment Texture, and Open in HDR. Pick one that approximates the lighting conditions of the footage you shot. If we change the render engine to Cycles and go to Rendered View, we can see the HDR's lighting effects on our modeled scene. If we go to Film and Transparency and disable that, we will get the qualities of the light without seeing the image in the background. Scale up the floor that we got from the motion tracking setup. 
If this came directly from the VFX workflow, under Object Properties and Visibility, this should be enabled as a shadow catcher. That means we won't see the object except for all of the CG shadows that will be cast onto this surface. In the compositing view, add a denoise node between the alpha over and the composite view. This will help clean up the final render. The default resolution for this render is 4K, and that's a bit high for a test render, so I'm going to set it to 50%. Make sure that the frame rate matches the frame rate of the footage that you shot. Set up a folder where all of your individual render frames can be saved to. Go to Render and Render Animation and wait for every frame to render. This will take a while. Open up a new project in Premiere so we can turn these individual render frames into video footage. Go to File, Import, and navigate to where you've saved all of your individual render frames. Select the first frame and make sure that image sequence is selected. This will load in all of the individual frames as footage. Drag and drop this into your timeline and you'll have a piece of footage that you can work with. Scrub through it to see what you've created. Now you can add any CG object to any amount of footage that you create. Add boxes, trees, plants, or even people. If you keep your trees low poly, you can add a bunch of them to visualize a planting concept.